This is lesson number two and if you haven't checked out the lesson number one, please do so and maintain the order of these lessons in order to make the best of them. For this lesson we will focus on more chords of the C major key. But before we do that, let's remind ourselves what improvising means. Simplest concept would include Improvising is basically a skill that can be learned, it doesn't require talent, it requires a lot of work. As the harmonies go by, we select notes from each chord, out of which we create a melody. And while doing this, we are free to use other notes as well, as long as they are sounding good. Okay, for this lesson we are still in the C major key. When building chords within a key, we start from each note of the key and use two third intervals stacked on each other. Building from C will produce C major, building from D will produce D minor, and building from every note within the C major key, we can produce E minor, F, G, A minor, and D diminished. This set of seven chords is unique to C major key, and each of these chords has three notes playing simultaneously. We will focus on those notes, also known as the strong notes, to form our phrases. In the previous video, we talked about how chords are being made. Now let's talk about the patterns over given chords. For starters, we will take two chords, C major and A minor, to form a chord progression. C major has C, E and G notes, and A minor has A, C and E notes. Now there are several patterns that you can choose for these two chords. First of all, C major key pattern. This is the fifth position of the C major key scale. Within that pattern, there are some interesting ones as well. For example, the pentatonic pattern. triad arpeggio pattern and a minor triad arpeggio pattern all these patterns share the same notes and using the C major one will be easiest but we have to keep the strong notes in focus, the notes from the arpeggios. In order to become a good improviser, you need to learn these arpeggios and patterns. And let's start by doing some simple root note playing over these chords, within the C major key pattern that we played. First let's start with C, and then let's transfer to A once the A minor chord comes into play. We will use the C on the 5th fret of the G string, and A on the 7th fret of the D string. Let's try to use C and A on the high E string, 8th fret and 5th fret. Let's simply go up and down over the C major scale, while still starting and ending phrases on root notes. We start from C and go to A and back. Great! Okay, this sounds a bit more interesting because we use more notes, but we kept the connection of our phrase to the chords because of use of the strong notes for starting and ending the phrase. We played with root notes only, but we haven't really used other notes from the chord to start and end our phrases. 
C major chord has C, E and G notes. So now let's start our phrase with C and end it with E. E is the strong note of A minor chord as well. Okay, since the E is a strong note of the A minor chord as well, we will use it for beginning of the phrase. You remember that we ended our phrase on the E, and in that time the A minor chord came into play. So we will use that E note for beginning of the phrase and return to C in the end. Very good, this phrase sounds a bit more interesting because now we use other strong notes. Remember we use the E note over the A minor chord. Choose the strong notes. Start and end phrases with the strong notes and use the C major key notes for improvising. Split the whole C major key pattern into 5 positions and work on each pattern per day. <laughs> 